Guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Bird Brain Podcast, where the goals arise above it all, stay elevated, create that infinity up your you. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today we are talking about something very interesting. Fighting for your relationships versus conflict within your relationships <laughs> versus being emotional versus being vulnerable uh, versus be- love versus possessiveness uh we're gonna cover a lot of layers and by the end of this episode you should have a better idea of how you handle conflict who you're fighting for what you're fighting for right if you are vulnerable or emotional and what your process is in terms of navigating relationships okay confrontation conflict all these things matter and we're gonna we're gonna break it down okay um so buckle up for this one because it's it's going to be a lot of truth involved in this okay a lot of truth a lot of understanding of what it is and hopefully by the end of this you have a better idea of the concept of what a relationship looks like not just romantic okay we're not just talking about romantic but relationship health in general yeah i think that's it so if you're driving put on a seatbelt. if you're at home buckle up baby <laughs> get some water all right and um we're just gonna walk through this all right stay tuned Hey y'all, how are you? How was your last week of February? It was a weird month. It was quick, you know. It was quick. February is usually usually a weird one, but um, I am glad that you know there's always an opportunity for change. I think a lot of times when we go through certain seasons or months or experiences, we use those as the um, the prototype for how life is supposed to be moving forward and it's just cool I think to have different moments of um, or different experiences right different experiences different outcomes in terms of what um, what things usually are versus what they are now and I think that even applies to relationships right something I've been thinking about this week just because of my own experiences is understanding Well, something I say to myself is this. I will fight for the people in my life, right? I will fight for the people in my life. I will not fight to keep people in my life. And I will not fight to be kept in someone else's life. You get me? So when I say I will fight for the people in my life, what that means is I will do what I can to support them, right? To honor them, to respect them, to go against my own defaults in terms of how I respond in certain situations. Anything involved to fight for the people in my life, right? Because sometimes fighting for the people in your life looks like you fighting your own toxic or unhealthy behaviors or your default patterns in order to advocate for the relationship that you have with someone else, right? Fighting to keep somebody in your life (laughs) is very different because you are overextending yourself. You are diminishing who you are. You are devaluing who you are. You are minimizing who you are and your needs. You are doing everything you can to keep somebody in your life. 
And by doing everything you can to keep somebody in your life, a lot of times that looks like abandoning yourself, <laughs> right? Undervaluing your own life source in order for somebody else to take up room in your life, right? And then fighting to stay in someone else's life is kind of the same thing where you recognize that a person is not really meeting you in the middle, but you are still trying to show up and pursue and do everything you can yet again to make sure that you are present in someone's life or to make sure that you are not forgotten. That's different. Right. And also there's a difference between fighting and conflict. Right. Conflict doesn't necessarily mean that there's a fight. Conflict just means that there is in. Uh, uh, let's see. There is a, a uh, interference in terms of the fluidity of the relationship between you and another person. Right. There's inter interference. So conflict will arise. Why? Because there are two people having two very separate human experiences who are maybe seeing circumstances very different or somebody is the recipient of somebody else's behavior and vice versa, right? That's conflict, right? Conflict doesn't always mean confrontation, so to speak, okay? That's not the same thing. And sometimes if you are used to a turbulent space, any form of conflict to you it's is seen as harmful and dangerous but here's the deal and here's the beautiful thing about conflict conflict doesn't mean um that after this conversation or after this exchange we no longer exist conflict means that hey here's something that's going on uh i want to see what your take is on it this is how i'm feeling this is what i'm experiencing and you're going to let me know one way or another how you feel and how you want to move moving forward. Does that make sense? One thing I've learned about conflict is that it doesn't always it doesn't always leave somebody wounded. Right. If anything, it's an opportunity for there to be healing involved if both people are more about the relationship than they are about being right in it. Right. So when we talk about fighting. Right. How do you fight? Right. What's your fighting style in your relationships? Do you check out? Do you deflect? Are you dismissive? Are you responsive? Right. Are you reactive? Right. How do you fight in your relationships? And sometimes you got to ask yourself, is this worth fighting for or am I worth giving up? Right. Because sometimes we are fighting so hard to keep things going, that we fail to realize that the other person is not fighting to keep us in their lives. They're not fighting for us, right? They're not advocating for their relationship with us. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Okay. And then the flip side of that is when someone is being present with us and, and being uh, intentional and there's a difference between being vulnerable and being emotional, right? The reason why I say that is because vulnerability involves a level of truth and honesty, sincerity, intention, and integrity. It's saying that, hey, these are certain parts of me that I know could potentially be damaged by you, right? I'm trusting you to a degree with this information. And I'm, I do, this is, I'm letting you know this because you matter to me. Vulnerability is is not true. Vulnerability is not manipulation. Someone who is emotional can simply be emotional because they know that it allows them a certain outcome of a relationship dynamic. Right. If I get emotional, whether I get angry, whether I get. Um, let's see. Uh sad, if you will, and I start crying, right? I know that I get a certain outcome from that. If I cry, then you have sympathy for me. You know, then it becomes, this is about me versus it being about us and the dynamics of what's happening in this relationship, right? Vulnerability, like I said, is a, a, an opportunity to make room for both people involved, whereas being emotional overrides what's going on right and, and and i'm not saying that if you cry that that's you trying to you know uh steer 
the the conflict, right, or the dynamic of what's happening in this situation. A lot of people do that, right? They become overly emotional because they know that I can override this, right? Since I don't want to deal with this situation or this experience or the, the discomfort that comes with my responsibility in this experience, I'm now going to respond in a certain way. I'm going to become overly angry, right? I'm going to become, uh, I'll cry, right? Or I'll shut down, right? That's also another one. I'll stonewall, okay? And a lot of times that's rooted in how we observed and how we were, and uh, in, in how we experienced conflict in our households, right? And you have the opportunity to learn different. It just requires you being very accountable, right? One of the things I say in, in, in my relationships, especially the ones that are important to me, I say it to myself and, you know, sometimes I'll make it a point to say it out loud just to re reassure the other person, this is what we're doing here. I say, it's not me versus you, it's you and me versus the problem. It's not me versus you, it's you and me versus the problem. And when you can see things that way, it allows it to not point blame, but instead you become very objective. You just state facts, right? This is how I feel because of these experiences. I don't have to pull from out of anywhere. This just based off of the experiences in the history of what has transpired. This is the end result. This is how I feel. I'm not saying you're a bad person, you're this, you're this. No, I'm saying this is how I feel based off of the actions, all right, based off the history of things that have transpired, okay? And depending on who you t you're you talking to, they will see that. And, and it's sometimes it is hard, you know, in those moments to hear or, or see information where somebody is saying like, hey, I'm hurting, right, vulnerability, I'm hurting because of these things, like, I'm hurting pretty bad. And it may come as an attack for you. But one thing that's important to understand in that moment is ask yourself, who is this person? Right? Who is the person that I'm currently in conflict with? How do they handle me? Right? How do they handle me? What's the dynamic of my relationship with them? How caring are they with their words? What's their reputation with me? Right? Because even in moments of, of discomfort, how are they still trying to show up? How do I still show up? Like when I'm angry or something, how do I still take care of the people that I claim that I care about? Okay? Because a lot of times how we handle conflict is an indication of how we've been inflicted. Right? And if you know that you have a tendency to shut down. All right, well, how can I counteract that? Because, you know, somebody I may be talking to, when I shut down, that could represent abandonment for them. So how do I counter that? Okay, listen, I just need a little, a little bit of space um, to figure this out and process, but I'm coming back, <laughs> right? When we talk about attachment styles and stuff like that, some people don't realize, you know, shutting down um, can operate or or can can signal to somebody who's experienced abandonment. Oh, they they want out, and then that gets your nervous system all messed up, right? Some people can be used to you know having knockdown, drag out arguments, where it's like, oh, I'm yelling and I'm yelling because I'm overly passionate etc. And for somebody else is like, no, that is that. No, nope. because when you yell in my previous experiences, yelling was usually uh, followed by physical harm. Something was thrown, a projectile, a fist, right? There was harm that came from yelling. So I'm going to take a step away because this ain't it. <laughs> Right. And then you have, you know, someone who may be overly emotional in the past. They knew that, you know, this is how I got my way. Right. The thing about it is, is not one note. That's the interesting thing about conflict and relationships, confrontation and relationships, being combative in relationships. Right. Having intention and relationships. 
because you'll have a different outcome. And truth be told, if there are two people that are more eager to make a situation right versus just simply be right, they'll handle each other in a very interesting way, right? It doesn't mean that I sugarcoat how I feel or I, you know, apologize for having feelings or I apologize for for what I said if it made you upset in the sense of like me expressing myself and telling you how I feel. I don't apologize for that, right? And I don't expect you to apologize for how you feel either, right? That's not the expectation. Respect is the expectation. Clarity is the expectation in the hopes that this relationship matters just as much as it does to me, to you, right? That's the goal. That's the goal, okay? So when we talk about conflict and confrontation, there are some people who are very confrontational, To me, I'm not confrontational, right? I'm not confrontational. It's not a vibe for me, okay? But I will step into discomfort in order to create safety. You get what I'm saying? So it's like I will express myself. I will communicate what's bothering me. And I will see clarity from the other person because it's not just about me. It's about us. What's going on, okay? So I will communicate. And at the end of the day, when it comes to communication, you know, comprehension is also important because there is no such thing as a healthy communication (laughs) with a person that doesn't have a healthy comprehension level. If somebody's only reason for showing up into a dialogue or conflict is because they want to be right versus they want to make things right, then that's not a healthy uh, balance, right? There's somebody trying to override what's going on and make you feel guilty for having feelings in the first place because now you're making me feel uncomfortable and that's not okay. I don't have the time to feel uncomfortable because of your feelings. You get what I'm saying? You know, well, you didn't have a problem before. So why do you have a problem now? You having a problem or me being responsible uh, makes me feel bad. It makes me feel bad. I don't really care about your feelings. <laughs> it makes me feel bad. Okay. And whoever you are, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody listening, you know, is, is not, it can go either way. And you have to be honest with yourself. How do I show up in conflict? Right? How do I show up in conflict? And again, if you are always the person that's trying to remedy a situation without assistance from the other person, like I said, this is not just about romantic partnerships, friendships too, family too, right? Professional relationships as well. If I'm constantly being met with somebody who is not eager to show up and remedy the situation because they lack vulnerability, right, then that is me fighting to keep somebody in my life, (laughs) right? That is me fighting to keep somebody in my life. That is also me fighting to be understood. There's a difference between, you know, communicating how you feel and negotiating and trying to convince somebody to see you for who you are. If you are set in your truth and you recognize that you are a human, right, and you do your best to be a human for other people, then there is no convincing somebody else that you matter and that you too have value. So the moment you feel like you're convincing somebody to see you or value you or to understand or get your point, no, I'm not going to convince somebody that I matter. Because people don't have to be convinced of anything that matters to them. You see what I'm saying? They'll do it themselves, right? If somebody recognizes the value that you are and the value that's in the relationship, they won't need convincing. There's no such thing as that, right? Someone who values you sees past the relationship they have with their pride and ego And they see the relationship they have with you as something that's much more important. So I'm willing to let my guard down. I'm willing to be uncomfortable. I'm willing to also show up for you at the same time, right? Because when we're vulnerable, we can take care of ourselves and also take care of the other person. And take care of the other person doesn't mean that we are um, appeasing or appropriating, right? 
it means that I'm going to speak and communicate to you with a certain level of respect, right? A certain level of care and love that I have for you. I'm going to talk to you that way, right? I'm going to address this situation that way. So anything that comes up for you, right? This is still a safe space for you to navigate that, okay? I'm not going to push you into a corner and be like, boom, 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 and just hit you with everything that I got so you feel it and then walk away and leave you there. No, if I care about you, it's like, hey, we're going to dance a little bit, okay? We're going to dance a little bit, right? I'm not shadow boxing, neither of you. We're going to spar, a little spar, right? We're just going to tap gloves, and that's all good, okay? This is not going for low blows. This is not trying to knock your lights out. No, we're just tapping gloves, man. This is cardio, right? Conflict is cardio, okay? Think of it like that. Steady state cardio, that's what conflict is. And at the end of it, yeah, you broke a sweat. There was a little bit of discomfort. But in the long run, you feel much better, right? You feel much better. You got some movement. You're a little bit less inflexible than you were before. There's a level of understanding now. Yeah, your heart rate got up, but it's all good. It's all good. Your heart rate got up because your heart is also being taken care of at the same time. That's what conflict is. But being in conflict with yourself in order to keep the peace in a relationship in the sense of, I am going to subject myself to harm and, and, and ridicule and, and deprecation because I shouldn't have feelings. <laughs> the only way this relationship can exist is if I don't have feelings. That's not conflict. That's actually conforming if you think about it, right? That's not conflict. And that's something I have to understand too. Like conflict, yes, it feels uncomfortable. But for me, it's like, I'm kind of willing to have it <laughs> in certain ways. I am willing to have it. Yeah, it may take a minute, but I'm still going to have this conflict, especially when the person is important to me, especially, right? I'm not going to let too much time pass without me being present in this situation and, and having some clarity. Because the goal, like I say all the time, relationships are choices, right? Relationships are invite only. So if somebody's in my life, I want that investment there. And I'm going to do my best on my end to be better. But if I'm the only one that's doing my best on my end, then that means I don't need this other person as a participant. Okay? Relationships require two people. Like I said, who care more about the relationship with the other person than their pride or their ego. All right. My relationships are more important to me than just my pride, because sometimes your pride wants to take up space just for the sake of right. Your pride doesn't need to sit in three seats, but it just wants to have those three seats because it can. Your ego, right, doesn't need the entire room. But it wants it. All right. Being too proud to apologize or admit wrongs lets the people know around you that you're not safe, right? Because you will spend so much of your time trying to be right versus making things right. That's not a safe person. A safe person is willing to show up in discomfort, willing to be accountable, willing to be respectful, right? Willing to honor you and themselves in order to create a safer space moving forward. That's a safe person, right? Somebody who's so eager to find ways to make you wrong about a situation and tell you that how you feel is invalid, they're not safe, right? If somebody stonewalls and every time things get uncomfortable, they just check out and then they come back like nothing happened versus, hey, I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna come back. You know, but I just need, I need some space right now and I need some time. And you, as a person, if you have this, this anxious style where you need to get things fixed in the moment, what you need to understand is this. Not everybody responds that way. Okay. Not everybody responds in that 
manner, right? The immediacy of getting things fixed right away. And the reason why is this, because sometimes what we say in a moment, we can't take back in moments to come after. All right. I'm the type of person I like to take my time, right? I like to process things. I like to be very mindful. So even before I say things certain times, I'll think it through. I'll look at different avenues of what happened and what transpired and what I feel, what's my responsibility and what's not, okay? I'll think about it beforehand and then I'll address it, okay? And then sometimes the conversation will happen in that moment and other times there might be some time because the other person might need some time too, right? And we all operate on different, um, what's the word I'm saying? We all operate at different times. So there may be a moment where it's like, man, I want to just get this out of the way because this this doesn't feel good. And the other person may be like, yeah, I need more time. It's like, all right, cool. Right? Bet. And that may be uncomfortable for me. And they may find discomfort when I decide, yeah, I need more time. Right? But, but, the big but is that I am taking time to process. So when I come back, I am aware, I am accountable, right? There's a level of affection I have when it comes to you, right? And I am showing up to take care of this relationship. That's what taking time looks like. I am taking time to regroup so when I return, I can do better. Not I'm taking time to be manipulative and control you. And the more time I take away from you, the more you'll feel bad about you even saying anything in the first place. And hopefully you'll apologize to me for hurting you. (laughs) Right? It's control. Right? Not everybody takes a step away to process and regroup. Some people are taking a step away to be controlling. Right? Because if I don't say anything to you and I leave you in this vulnerable state, you're now just kind of like, I, I don't know what's happening. I, I'm unsure, right? It's kind of like leaving somebody in a dark tunnel and you taking the flashlight and saying, hey, I'm going to take this flashlight. Oh, when are you coming back? Well, I'm scared. I'm in the dark. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if you're going to come back. What's the deal? You know what I'm saying? We have to understand everybody deals with things different. And that, like the stonewalling thing, that's so important to be mindful of. Because if you really care about somebody, they've experienced some level of abandonment, right? Or they've experienced where they their feelings were were minimized and, 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 and diminished. And you do that to them, right? And they mention it. And you continue to do that. You're not a safe person. You can't be trusted. Because what you are doing is you are putting your ego and pride into the situation because instead of you recognizing that it's not necessarily about you, it's about what transpired, you're making it your thing and now you're punishing the person for addressing the situation. So you're being manipulative, right? And you're trying to uh, establish dominance. You're not a safe person, Okay, and we all may do it in moments, right? Where it's like, fuck, I'm, I'm upset. I don't want to talk to this person. Oh, they're reaching out to me. I don't want to talk to them. Versus being like, hey, look, I'm not ready to talk yet, right? But I will, I will return. And there has to be a happy medium with that too because we have to understand that in moments of conflict is not just about us. I can't stress this enough. So even if you are the type of person that takes time, understand that there's still a, a person in the waiting room Right. There's still somebody in the waiting room that's looking to have this relationship. And if the relationship does matter to you, be mindful of that. In conflict, both people matter. Right. In conflict, both people matter. And when you understand that, you become a safe person. So moving forward, just think about these things because there's so much more to conflict and conflict is not always about harm. Conflict just means that there is a uh, interference in peace, (laughs) but conflict still makes room for peace to be there. All right. It's not about being combative. It's not about being confrontational. Okay. That's not what conflict is. All right. Because some people who are very confrontational can't take the heat when they get it back. 
And I know some of those people. It's like, oh, yeah, you're confrontational. You like to just say what you want. All right, cool. Let me match you. Oh, it doesn't feel good. Noted. So you're the type of person you're, you like to say and do whatever you want without there being consequences. Right? A lot of confrontational people don't know how to handle the consequences of their actions. And that's not the same as conflict. Okay? Confrontation can, uh, can indicate that there is some conflict there. But conflict isn't necessarily always harmful. Conflict does leave room. For there to be a level of peace and love and truth, respect, honor, and kindness. All right? So again, I'll leave you with this. I will fight for the people in my life. I will not fight to keep people in my life. And I will not fight to be kept in someone else's life. I will show up as I am. I will treat people well, be intentional. And that's my only job. And moving forward, I am not convincing anyone that I matter because I don't have to convince people of the things that matter to them. Okay. <laughs> we just find little ways to take better care of people, right? Especially if we recognize that we were not always honored in the ways that we deserved when we needed it most. Okay. And if somebody can't see your feelings and respect them and, and try to take better care of them moving forward, then those are not your people. Right. Someone who cares about you, even when they're upset, will still find their ways to take care of you, respect you and value you in those moments of discomfort. Remember that and be that. All right. It's not one sided. OK, so take a look at how you you show up in conflict and be very honest because none of us are perfect. And somebody may say, oh, yeah, I'm always willing to talk and everything like that. Yeah. But are you willing to listen? And if you always think that somebody should talk to you first before you become a little bit more aware of your own behavior and how you may impact other people, then you got a lot of work to do, okay? Because those people that are just like, oh, yeah, you should be able to talk to me when you have a problem. Well, I shouldn't be the one that's always communicating in these situations. You should have a better talk with yourself and understand your responsibility and your actions and how you are as a person, OK, when we have relationships with other people in our adult lives, that is not our responsibility to be their parent. And just because somebody may be a little bit more self-aware does not mean that they take the brunt of um, carrying the entire load of the responsibility in terms of the relationship and self-awareness. Right. Don't forget the job that you have now. You learned the responsibilities, you learned the tools that you needed to, to sustain that job with people. It's no different. Okay. Your willingness to learn will indicate the health of that relationship. And if you don't want to learn something, you won't, if you don't want to learn someone's history and understand how can I not give them another thing to heal from, then that's a choice that you're making. But again, when we value the things that we value, we take care of them and we are active in that space. <laughs> OK, so just something to think about and chew on and, and process. But again, we go hard for the people in our lives, right? But we don't work so hard to keep people who don't want to be kept and we don't work so hard to be kept by people who are not keeping us. OK, so that's all I got. Uh, yeah. Take care of yourselves. Yeah. Uh, want to become a Patreon bonus content, ad free, uh, early access. My Patreon supporters, I will be dropping, um, a bonus episode. Things got weird. It was, it was a, a, a technology glitch this week. Uh, things got wild. So I didn't have a chance to drop, uh, a bonus episode this week, but I got you guys. Uh, don't fret. Um, if you want a coaching, right? Uh, if you want to sign up for coaching, get at me. Someone asked because I've been having this conversation with with uh, different people in terms of like, well, what's the difference between how you coach and, and talk therapy, et cetera, et cetera. Well, somebody pointed it out to me. They were like, you're very different. <laughs> And how you coach and I've been with the therapist or I have a therapist and when I work with you it's different 
And for me, my goal or what I recognize is the beauty about life for me. Life has been very generous in terms of what it gave me to learn from. My experiences have allowed me to be a little bit more versatile and aware of other people. Even if I haven't had the same exact experience, I can still recognize that somebody's experience is unique to them and figure out tools and practices to navigate that space, okay, for them as people, all right? So as when it comes to me coaching clients, I understand that each person is an individual. Even if there might be similarities, each person is an individual, and I do my best to navigate it in that space okay and another thing before i forget when it comes to fighting understand and remind yourself if i keep showing up in spaces that don't appreciate me i am fighting against my greater good i'm not fighting or advocating for me at all and sometimes giving up on spaces in that way is you fighting for yourself okay remember that I just wanted to remind you of that. Stop trying to fight to keep people there because when you're fighting to keep people there, you are now fighting harder for them than you are for yourself. And that in turn makes the struggle a lot harder for you to recognize that you are somebody that's worth showing up for. And that's a complete sentence. All right. So take care of yourselves. Yes. Take care of each other. Coaching link is in bio. The book link is in bio. Merch link is in the bio of this episode. All right. Appreciate you guys. Take flight.